Hello, Pisces. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Pisces. You begin with this Touch the Sky card. There were a series of readings in your sign earlier this year and I think through the end of last year talking about you really embracing your spiritual self, your oracular, uh, otherworldly aspects. And that this was, um, you know, not a, not a requirement as such, right? You don't have to do it. Um, but that it was your, that you were being called to this, that there was a role for you to play, to be, uh, to be this sort of priest, priestess, oracular uh, person within society. And it seems to me that some of you, if you've come here, are still in resistance to this. Or maybe you're new and you didn't even know about those other readings. And now, now we're going to talk about it. But there is a, there is a feeling of, of resisting. The visible underlying here is the queen bee. And I normally see her as, you know, sort of a, a figure of authority and power, but today she's looking uh, indecisive. You know, she's got a bee on each hand and she doesn't, she doesn't quite know what to do. There's a, there's a sense of, of hesitation in her. And then right below that is this, my home is my castle. And then on the bottom of the deck is this, oh, sunny day where you're faced in a completely different direction. <laughs> you just got your back turned to us here in the fourth wall of tarot. So it seems like maybe I think it could be a number of things. One, that you really don't want to do it, that it sounds vulnerable, a little scary, perhaps overwhelming, um, you know, kind of like you'll have to end up taking care of a bunch of people or solving a bunch of people's problems. Um, or maybe, it may be that you don't know with this sort of bit of confusion that you don't quite know how to begin, perhaps. How to start. Or there's some level of inertia. But I think that even if, even if that's true, even if you're not sure how to start, that there is with this card at the very bottom, something of a rejection happening of this path, Pisces. But we have judgment coming out. And this is only judgment's first appearance. Kind of the time is now. Uh, previously, there was preparation time. There was space maybe to get used to the idea, to practice some of the skills, to, to kind of wrap your mind around the whole thing. But it's, it's time to go. <laughs> um, right underneath, we have this Ten of Swords. 
it's one of my favorite Ten of Swords cards, this, right, this kind of release ooh, of all this energy that maybe you've been holding on to. And then the bottom of this deck is this really exuberant Four of Wands. So there's a lot of energy happening that wants to, to propel you into this new existence. The next card is the Magician. And he's actually coming through here as too much control. Too much effort at control. Wanting, you know, maybe wanting to have this be exactly as you expect it, you know, maybe having some sort of idea in your head of what it means to be the oracle, to be the seer, to be um, this kind of priestess energy. And I do say priestess more than priest. Um, I think of the priest being more of a a vicar of somebody who connects the above and the below, like the Hierophant. Whereas this is more uh, perhaps of a, a pure channeling, right? That the priestess allows um, source to, to come into her. Not you know, she's not kind of translating the way the Hierophant might. She is a, a kind of direct embodiment of this source energy. And I think that it's, right, it's this aspect that can feel very vulnerable. And... So you want to maintain control and also maybe intellectual control. Uh, that you want things to seem logical or reasonable. But that isn't, that isn't what this is. I mean, it, 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 um, it isn't that you, you know, kind of lose your mind. but that you release some of the restriction, right? She's, you know, her braid is hanging there and she's going to accept whatever comes through this channel. So we have the Knight of Cups, who is your card. And this, there is a, there is a romance in this. This is about love. Because that's really what wants to come through you. is this, is love for, for you to move through the world as a walking portal of love. But we do also have the King of Cups. So there is maturity here as well. Uh, this doesn't mean that, you know, you, you lose control of your emotions or, you know, the expression of your emotions 
or you, um, you know, become just completely open to everything and every emotion that everybody has everywhere. It's actually, you know, it's actually not, in fact, right? This is not about feeling other people. That's sort of more of a Cancerian task, if we want to say that, a Cancerian skill set. You are being asked not to be empathic to people, but to be a channel for the source of all things. And it's uh, it's feelings of love. Um, and this does mean with this eight of cups that you may you may have to let go of a bunch of stuff. You may have to let go of resentments, um, needs for you know, people to be accountable, for people to uh, make amends, for, um, you know, to you or just around you, uh, for people to behave in some particular way, uh, for other people to make the first move, all of these things are ways that you hold yourself Back, hold yourself sort of nailed to the ground. And that's part of that control aspect. You cannot, you can't make other people do anything. Trying to control others either directly by, you know, telling them what to do or indirectly through hints, um, you know, various forms of manipulation, um, uh, being passive aggressive, being uh, being the martyr, um, all of these ways that we have of attempting to control other people's behavior. They're not going to work. They don't work. The only thing we have control over is our own selves, our own uh, way of moving through the world. So even if somebody, you know, close to us has some behavior that we really want them to change, it's more through example, through also through compassion, through, uh, respect, I want to say, right? The King of Cups, um, all the kings, right, are figures of respect that we have for, for others as fellow human beings. So then we have the Knight of Pentacles. And in this deck, uh, he does especially come across as a figure of devotion, right? The hands are clasped kind of in a prayer pose. That this is a path of devotion and dedication. That it isn't a one-time thing. That this is the opening of something uh, lifelong that I think will not be static, that will change. But it is something new because the bottom of the deck has the Ace of Pentacles. And below the, the Knight is my Seer card. This is the Page of Pentacles in this deck, but um, right, her hands are next to her eyes and she's you know, she looks as if she might be um, 
you know, Sybil, a Pythia living on a mountain with goats. And the, so there is something, there's something about a connection to oracles and seers of the past. Um, you know, uh, I sometimes quote Terry Pratchett, and in his Tiffany Aching books, there's a character called the Kelda. And she's a matriarchal figure, and she's also a shamanic and kind of priestess figure. And one of the skills that she has is she drinks a particular mixture, and it allows her to connect with the Keldas that came before. Um... Right, this kind of appears in Dune as well, right? The, the Bene Gesserit can speak to others of their kind, right, from the past. That there's a lineage happening that continues. And below that is this Hanged Man. Another card I associate with Pisces. Uh, and this releasing of self. The, right, it's time to go. It's time to get down from the tree. We've been up there. This temperance card too, she's removed her mask. She is visible, she is coming out. And then this 10 of wands, which to me is about coming out from under the kitten, <laughs> right? The kitten not as a burden that you've been carrying around as is sometimes in the Ten of Wands, but the kitten as a place you've been hiding. You've been holed up under the kitten, watching the world, thinking that it's going to hell in a handbasket. It's time to come out. And it may be tempting to come out in this Seven of Wands posture of real caution, of being really mind, you know, extra mindful, uh, extra vigilant, I should say. It's not so much mindful, it's vigilant. But it's a, the posture is counter. And so we have judgment again, right? And she's, she's looking at you, Pisces. And she's quite soft. She's not armored up. She doesn't have a spear or a sword. There's a gentleness a softness to this judgment. And then judgment number three. <laughs> and here very much with this taking this last look back. This final, right, this final look behind before stepping through the portal. Um, and what's under her, and I sort of picture as being on the other side, because there's kind of, right, there's pinks and things going on in both of these cards, is this Three of Cups. So you're not, you're not going through alone, right? There are others. So you're not being asked to do this alone, Pisces. But you're going to kind of be alone if you if you remain under the kitten, if you stick to your guns and, and refuse to move. Um, right, actually below that is right this three of swords. Right, you kind of get stuck 
in that space. Um, the bottom is the Queen of Swords. And she looks to me, um, actually all the, right, there's, there's a couple of, there's another court card, another queen, and there's some other cards in this deck that all seem like they're just, right, they're not quite ready to move. They feel, they feel like they're kind of trying to get up the, the, the impetus to move. Right, there's the Queen of Swords who maybe is caught up in, in really thinking about things. There's this Nine of Cups who may be concerned about how this path is going to affect her own well-being, her own happiness, her own... Um, you know, kind of what does she get out of it a little bit? Okay. And it's an absolute fair question to ask. Then we have this guy who's... You know, he's been lying there under the water for a long time. Um, there is a kind of inertia to get up and rise to, all right, this is a, you know, this Ten of Swords is much more active. And I think that that, there is something currently, there are energies currently that are going to help you get out of this pond. And this Queen of Cups who's, you know, staring down at the rose. And this Empress who's, you know, possibly asleep on her throne. So there's these, right, these this, like, it's just, <laughs> it wants to move, but it, it needs, right? It needs some sort of spark. And fortunately, we have that with a tower. Uh, currently, as I record this, there is a T-square happening. Uh, the sun opposite Chiron with Mars in Cancer at the tip. And simultaneously, there is an opposition between Venus and Uranus. So Mars, the tower, Uranus, the lightning. This, this energy I mean, the, right, they're moving, moving through water signs. Venus is in Scorpio as she opposes Uranus. Mars is in Cancer. So there is, if you're feeling it, I don't think that this is a, I don't think that this is a tower that, you know, comes in and blows up your life or anything. This, you may just wake up in the morning thinking, oh, I feel totally different. Um, below that is the Two of Cups. And what you may wake up feeling is not so much, you know, as if there's been a bolt of lightning that's run through you. But you may wake up with this Two of Cups and then at the bottom of the deck, Page of Cups. You may suddenly feel, you know, tenderness and love and generosity towards others in a way that you have not done so before. That there's there's something about the current energy that will make that will help you to feel safer. that will help you to really feel um, the full connection to source. Because it isn't, you know, that you're, that you're just a channel. 
right? This energy of love also takes care of you. It minds you as much as it wants to mind others around you. You're not sort of being armored up and sent out into the battle. Right? That's that's this energy of, of the Seven of Wands. That's not what's happening here. What we have is this judgment. This exuberance. This sudden seeing of things in a different way. Maybe seeing people in a different way. Right? Then we have the butterfly, the, the, the completed transformation. Um, also beauty, a focus on beauty, seeing beauty. And then the mother of cups. That, you know, it isn't that you're being asked to be a mother to everybody. that you just, right, you sort of exude energies when you allow this to come through you. You will know what to do and what to say to people when you meet them. That will make them feel held and seen. That will help them to feel this love Without you, you know, having to, you know, help them pull up their socks and, and get their life together. Uh, that's not what this is about, right? Because we have the stingray. So what we, what the, the, the aim here is to spread the energy so that they find their own way. You're not correcting, you're not organizing somebody, you're not, right, you're not being a parent. Right, we're talking mostly here about contact with adults or possibly with children that are not your own. You know, parenting is its own special thing. This is about you moving through the world and meeting up with, with friends, with family, with strangers, with the barista at the coffee shop, um, with people at your job. Uh, you know, possibly it is your job. But I kind of, right, I don't want to really talk about this as, as like a profession. That's not, right, that's not what this is. This is an embodiment. This is being, being the portal for life force, for love, for tenderness. I don't even want to say compassion because that kind of implies a top-down thing, if you know what I mean, right? This poor person, you know, I have compassion for their situation. And yes, but it's, it's going beyond that. It is seeing what they can be in their, in their fullest wellness. Like, I don't even need compassion because I can see the whole possibility of this person. And then I'm going to really see them that way as much as I can. Advice. Well, there's insight. So allowing, right, allowing insight to come, uh, allowing yourself to see yourself as well as others. Uh, below we have trans subconscious. Um, 
you know, this is by kind of uh, seeing into your own self, what is it that's um, stopping you? You know, is there a belief? Uh, is there a fear? Um, right, what is it that's, that's in the, you know, perhaps in the subconscious? Right, which of these cups that you're wanting to leave behind, right? What's in them? And then the bottom is discipline. Um, right, doing the things. Um, and it's actually more about doing, doing the things that keep you in balance. Keeping yourself nourished keeping yourself um, right in, in kind of in a, in a dynamic balance. Whatever that is, it may be, right, it may be getting off social media. It may be making sure you have time to spend for yourself, by yourself. Uh, it may mean really being mindful of what you're thinking. What are your thoughts in any given moment? Right, that's really the discipline. So that you can hold this, this beingness. So we have the prison, um, knowing that there's more than a, right, what appears initially, that there are different ways to see things and that sometimes there are really funky ways to see things. Also seeing things from the perspective of source or from your own wider self as well as from your human self. We don't want to exclude that because it's your human self, right? That can really feel human love for others. This is not about sort of treating everybody in exactly the same way. You're going to be different with your lover and with your sibling than with the barista that makes your coffee or the person in the next cubicle at work. You're, you're not going to wander around, you know, behaving the same way with everybody. You are maintaining your humanity, your individuality. And you are allowing uh, this healing source energy to, to be manifest in the world through you. So ascension, right? Letting letting it happen. Not holding it back. And then values, right? It, this is another thing. You are not giving up on your values. You hold those. You don't... Um, you know, accept things that are not acceptable. You do have values and those are important. Right? This is not about erasing who you are in any way. And then water the emotional. Water, consciousness, emotion, um, liminal spaces, all of that, you know, beautiful, juicy, Piscean stuff. So 
So you can have and be all of that. You know, Pisces does have this energy of um, not wanting a lot of borders. But that, again, doesn't mean that you're not an individual who has your own values, um, your own opinions about things, your own beliefs, your own cosmology, uh, your own preferences. But it does mean that you don't have rigid boundaries around all of this that you may change if you encounter new information. And that you, you know, view other human beings, even those you disagree with, as part of your whole. You don't other people. any more than you would other, you know, parts of yourself. As I was shuffling this deck, um, a card flew out and it didn't want to be part of this row, but it wanted to be kept and it's the star. And it's this interesting star because it has, right, it has the skull and then it has the, the little tape here says, A Hunting We Will Go, which is from a poem about um, fairies uh, so this, right, that, that your star that is calling you, the star that is trying to get your attention, the star that wishes for you to turn this way to follow, is an occult, fairy, uh, right? It's, um, it's all this woo-woo stuff that is calling you to really Embrace that. To embrace the idea um, of this esoteric spiritual reality. Pisces. It's time to go. Judgment four times. <laughs> Came out in every tarot deck. It is time to go to allow this transformation of yourself. I hope that uh, this made sense. I hope that you, I hope that you're excited about this Pisces. That, right, that you can feel the, the energy and the juice of this. And I wish you all the very, very best. And I will see you next time. So long, Pisces.